So I'll wait for all of you to pull up. And then I'll be starting with the session today. So everybody, please quickly cast your votes onto the polling window so that I can have some understanding what is the competence of the students in order to have Java knowledge. And I have a question from Abhishek. He's asking me, is all the APIs of Java supported by Android? Abhishek, to a larger extent, Android supports all the APIs of Java. But it is just that, suppose a few APIs which might be working up on the web might not be available in Android for the Java part. All right, and they also have a few set of APIs of the, which they have created all by their own. So it is like a Java plus the Android API that we use in Android application development. So I think everybody has got voted up, and I see a 57, 43 percent result for the complete poll that I have just asked. So it's it means that I have to take the Java part today, and I'll be covering the Java part. And as we'll be moving ahead, we'll be actually talking about the Android components. I hope this is fine with everyone. If everybody is fine with this, you can just write it onto the chat window because we'll be start. Java is the basic language that is used in Android application development. So I'll be covering the very basics basics of Java programming that are required in order to learn Android application development. All right, so let's start with the Java first. So what exactly is Java is something which I want to tell you all. So Java is not just a programming language, but it is a complete platform for object-oriented programming. So what I mean by object-oriented programming is if I talk about an object-centric development, Suppose if I talk, take an example, if I take an example of a car, all right, so when I talk about the car, I never talk about, say, the tires of the car or, say, the engine of the car. I never talk about the speedometer. I never talk, talk about the handle, steering, and all. As an object, I refer to it as an entity, which is car. So when I talk about, say, a car can, say, a, a, car, can, a, a car can run, all right, or if I say an example, a, a car can actually accommodate few people. So these are all basic examples of car of object. Platform is, uh, Chavi has asked me a question here, what exactly we mean by platform? So platform is something like which you can build up your base on. So if you talk about a platform, in its literal meaning is something which is a base for the trains to run. Similarly, a platform is a base for the application development to be done. I hope uh, you understand this, Chavi, now. So I was telling you about object-centric development. When I talk about object-centric development, I mean I'm actually referring to an entity, entity as an object. I'm not referring it to as something which is a part or say all the attributes that comprise the object. I give it a single name, which is the object. So this is what we call by, uh, what we know or what we mean by object-centric application development. <laughs> then every Java application has got a runtime environment. So when I talk about the runtime environment, these are the standard class libraries which provide the application programming interface. And the JVM along with the JRE, all right, so it is the JVM along with the JRE that we actually call the runtime environment. So all the applications, whenever an application runs onto the machine, what, what, how it actually works up is it creates a sandbox of its own and it goes, creates a virtual machine of its own in order to run onto the device. So this is how the complete JRE works. And then we also have the JDK. The JDK is the Java development kit. Suppose if I'm using some APIs, if I'm using some libraries in my application. So all these libraries which I can utilize in order to create my Java applications are actually housed by the Java development kit. Any person having any doubts with object centric, what we, what we mean by object centricity when we talk about application development, where, what we mean by the Java runtime environment, which is very much like a sandbox that I create for my application to be run into, and anything uh, you know, want to know about the JDK, or these are the, all the libraries which we utilize in our applications in order to get our application development done. I hope I have just right reiterated all the three components here one by one. If you have any questions, any queries, you can write it onto the chat window. And you all people also have access to the uh, raising hand option. So if you want to speak up, you can just raise your hands. 
No, uh, Neha has asked me a question here. Can Java codes be run on C or C++ compilers? No, Neha, it is not uh, possible to run the Java codes on C and C++ compilers. For Java, we have the just-in-time compiler that does the work and also the Java virtual machine which is the virtual machine that sits on top of the hardware and does the necessary conversions from the high level language to a machine level, level language. I hope you understand this Neha. So how exactly Java works? Is, is, is this fine with you Neha? Any, any other query that you have? Have you got the response correctly or is this is there something that you still want to know about it? You can just write it on to the chat window. So it seems uh, it is clear to her now. So how exactly the Java Virtual Machine works? So the Java Virtual Machine is something which you can think of. I'll just take an example here. I'll open paint for all of you here. That is 1.7. Neha is asking me which is the latest version of JDK that is available in the market. It is 1.7 at present, Neha. Alright, so I was just telling you an example of how exactly the JVM works. So let me just take an example here. So you can think of this layer as the hardware layer. Alright, so this is the actual hardware that will be doing the, or say, I would say that will interpret the, all the machine instructions. Now on top of the hardware, I have something which, we call, which I call as the Java Virtual Machine. So this is the Java Virtual Machine, what it will do is, I have all the bytecodes that keep coming up after the compilation of any Java class. After the compilation of a Java class, what I do get is, I get a bytecode. So you can think of this as a bytecode. Now what I have is, I have a virtual machine which sits on top of the hardware which is the hardware is this, alright. So when I talk about the platform independence, so it is the Java platform ind independence when I talk about it is actually derived by two forces. One is the Java bytecode and the other force is the Java virtual machine. So here I have the complete hardware. Now I have a Java virtual machine which sits on top of the hardware and all the Java bytecode that I have here, alright, is trans translated by this Java virtual machine so that it could be understood by the hardware and finally gets executed. I hope this example is clear to everyone how exactly the Java works. So we have the Java bytecode after the compilation which is translated by the Java virtual machine and finally executed by the system hardware. Any person having any doubts in this example, they can quickly write it, uh, quickly write it onto the chat windows. Anyone, Neha, Chavi, Vikas, Vikesh, anyone? Vikesh, you want to speak up about a query? I'll wait for you. I'll, I'll just tell you, Amit, Amit, what is bytecode here? All right. I have got a hand raised here. Let me see who it is. Yes, Vikesh, you can speak up now. Hi, yes. uh, as we know bytecode is in, yes, uh, as we know bytecode is in a machine language format only in form of 1, 0. So what does actually JVM translate into? Uh, uh, as understood by me, bytecode itself is understood by the machine directly. No, it's not the case. Uh, 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 the case, it is always the JVM. Actually, when we talk about the machine level interaction, alright? So what we say is, uh, you might have worked with JavaScripts and all, you might have worked with all the JavaScripts and so if I talk about say I'll uh, because I'll be very specific to you when I be, I'll be discussing about this so when I talk about JavaScript say it is something which is a bytecode which is on the web alright so I need some machine you might have son, uh, seen a problem where it's uh, you might have got an error that you need to have the Java uh, runtime environment in order to view this page you might have seen that yeah, yeah exactly all right. right. So why this happens is because if it is already in the bytecode, it would have got translated. But since I need an extra level here, which is extra level of com translation that is actually given to me by the Java virtual machine. So that is why the Java component is actually required onto the machine. The platform independence is not entirely of the bytecode only. It is also the okay. JVM, which sits on top of the hardware, which actually does that. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Got it. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the question that you come, came up with. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So everybody, 
is clear with us. Uh, all right, here I have a question here. Is the JVM directly communicate with the hardware? Uh, the Abhishek, uh, the process that we have here is we have the hardware, we have the operating system sitting on, sitting on top of the hardware, then we have the JVM above it, and then we have the bytecode. So it is the complete pattern here. I hope you understand this now. We have the hardware, then on top of it we have the operating system, then on top of it we have the, J, uh, we have the Java virtual machine, and then on the top of it we have the bytecode. All right, I've got another hand raised. Vikesh, yes, Vikesh, can you speak up? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't intend it. All right, all right, that's fine. Don't worry about that. All right, I'll mute you again. So I hope this is clear to everyone. Now let's see. So how exactly the JVM work? It as I told you, it runs the bytecode. I think I have a leftover question from Amit. Yes. He is saying, uh, I cannot understand what is bytecode. I'll just do it. I'll, do, I'll make you understand what is the bytecode in the future, further slides that I have. I mean, don't worry about that. And it makes the Java platform independent, and it also handles the memory management. 